Hi Year 12. So as you know, we've been looking at visual texts as possible related texts for your study of the distinctive visual. We have been looking at the techniques used in visual text, and now I want to model to you an analysis of the visual text in relation to how it evinces the distinctively visual. You'll have to pick your own related visual text for the upcoming assessment as well as the HSC. So this video is designed as a modelling exercise, demonstrating the ways in which we analyse visual text. For indeed, the better your analysis and deconstruction of your text, the more material you will have in developing a sophisticated response to an essay question. Okay, so the text that I'll be looking at with you today is On the Wallaby Track by Frederick McCubbin, painted in 1896. On the Wallaby Track was a term used for itinerant workers roaming the bush on the fringes of properties looking for work. I would say this painting uses the distinctly, distinctively visual to present a very intimate insight into the life of a young struggling family. The painting presents to us a private moment between the members of the family and although the figures in the painting are presented plainly enough, doing nothing remarkable, the body language and the placement of the persons in the painting communicates to the audience that they are witnessing a very poignant moment. The attitude and feelings of the mother are clearly communicated through the, through the distinctively visual. Her head is turned to the side, away from the audience and away from her baby, staring at nothing. Her arm falls to the side here, with the baby propped up only by her bent legs and a hand resting over the baby. This distinctly, distinctively visual representation of the mother communicates to us the exhaustion and fatigue of a young mother travelling on the road. Furthermore, it communicates to us the solemnity of the mother's situation, her disconsolate, sad reflection on looking forward to another night sleeping out in the Australian bush after a long day's walk on the Wallaby Track. The solemnity of the mother's attitude is particularly communicated through her body language towards a baby. Too tight to even hold the baby, instead letting the baby loll about on her bent knees. Her face being turned away from the audience also infers that she does not readily accept being the main focus, the protagonist of the painting, turning aside to embrace her private solemnity and isolation. However, I would argue that the mother is the most salient point of the image. She is positioned in the forefront of the painting and is the most commanding presence. In this way, I think the composer uses her commanding, distinctly visual presence to present her as the protagonist of the painting. She is the vehicle through which the travails of a young, unemployed family out in the bush frontier are explored and communicated. Indeed, the composer uses the distinctively visual to clearly communicate the attitudes and feelings of this young mother without a word being spoken. Another figure is the father, who is positioned diminutively in comparison to the placement of the mother. He is off in the background, completely turned away from the audience. We cannot even see his face as he is huddled over his fire in his billy can with his attention wholly consumed by it. He therefore is an anonymous figure for us. However, his figure still draws upon the distinctively visual, despite his anonymity. He is busying himself with the handling of the fire by the small family tent, which is depicted faintly in the distance, and his strong arm holding out the billy can, de depicting a typical manly scene while the mother is left reclining with the baby. This presentation of the family reinforces respective attitudes towards gender roles at the time, with the man leading the movement along the Wallaby Track. And yet, however, it is the woman who commands our immediate focus. Is she the one that carries the brunt of this ordeal? There is a noticeable distance between the two figures. Perhaps communicating the distance within the relationship itself. Despite this distance and the possible tension it implies, I think the use of the distinctively visual invokes a very intimate family portrait. This intimacy is conveyed through the sensitive positioning and averted gaze of the mother, 
the lolling baby and the busy father setting up camp in the wilderness. The distance between the figures, the seeming preoccupation of both, and the solemnity of their presence communicate strong emotion in viewing the scene. And because the audience is privy to such a moment, the painting is very intimate. The strong emotion in the scene is further conveyed by the tangible mood set by the colour tones of the painting, which are very dark. In this way, the use of the distinctively visual, the dark hues of the undergrowth where the scene is set, further intensifies the strong, sombre emotion of the scene. This darkness, however, is contrasted by the light of the clearing in the distance. This light is framed by the dark vectors of the path running along towards the opening. This contrast between the darkness of undergrowth, where the family plans to spend the night, and the light beyond represents the hope of the future. That further along the path lies hope, a bright future, the promise of finding employment of getting the nice new home and finding stability. And in this way, the distinctively visual is used to communicate the hopes and dreams of this itinerant family and communicate that universal theme of the hope and promise of the future. And so class, these are the ways in which I think the distinctively visual is used to communicate to the audience, not just a picture, but to communicate the hopes and sufferings and intimacies within a young family. These are my immediate impressions, and I'm sure you can come up with more aspects of the distinctively visual used in the painting. This is a general analysis, and you should do the same for the study of your own related text. A thorough general analysis of how the distinctively visual is used in your text will provide you with material needed to meet the specific requirements of the HSC essay question or an or an assessment essay question. I hope this model analysis will be of use to you and shed some light on the ways in which you can go about your own analysis. Good luck, you 12.